Hello everyone, I wanted to do a bit of a more relaxed type of video where I speak about this um, book. So a little bit of context for this book. I received this book uh, from um, the Princeton University Press. So I haven't actually bought this book myself uh, and I received it for an honest review. And because of the type of book that it is, it took me a, um, a while uh, to go through some of the things in it. So this is a course in uh, complex analysis. And first of all, I want to say it is a textbook. So I'm going to show you kind of the first um, pages of uh, the book so you get you get an idea so it goes on your typical kind of style of um, a textbook you have very interesting um, definitions put quite big in the box like that so it kind of like pops on the page then you've got like theorems down the page you've got examples and it goes on to finish the chapter with um questions and exercises for you to do so it is a full-on textbook um, another thing that i want to say straight away i'm not an expert in complex analysis absolutely at all uh, the majority of the concepts in this book are new to me as well so i haven't fully read all of the book um, because it is a textbook so it is for me more like a journey so I'm learning as I go through um, this uh, book as well so first of all I I want to show you the back a bit so if you want to read all of the bits on the back you can pause the video right now and read the back um, so the book is accessible to beginning graduate students and independent students that the author mentions they have to be strong and motivated um, and i totally agree with that the concepts are complex and um, they're not very easy to grasp and you need a lot of a lot a lot of uh, background knowledge of analysis and topology as well to go through the context of um, this book. Um, it also is accessible to advanced graduates um, with obviously the mentioned uh, background. Now for me personally I am an advanced graduate undergraduate um, so I've finished uni a couple of years ago and I didn't go into any master's or anything um, or postgraduate courses after that. So I think I'm in the independent student, like undergraduate kind of knowledge with background in analysis and little background in topology. So I don't have that much uh, information to tell you on that. Um, the the textbook is is very wonderfully organized and I found that really interesting so I want to show you the contents so again as you can see it goes through a lot of uh, topology as well as analysis so that was um, very that is very interesting and uh, for me personally that was a bit of a struggle because I don't have a lot of background knowledge in topology but um, slowly I can pick things up so I think that was interesting. Um, it um, says that it should have around 360 problems. Um, obviously I didn't count all of the problems at the end of each chapter to actually um, say yes there are 360 problems but they are quite a lot of um, exercises at the end of each chapter and it has a lot of examples as well and um, that made it uh, quite interesting and quite easy to 
go through. Um, another bit that I really liked because I'm a bit of a sucker for this kind of uh, things um, are the extra notes. So I'm since I finished uni and stuff, I got a bit more into like historical things and I'm a bit more interested in some of those. So as you can see on on here, it has little notes just like that on the side of the page. And they are like little historical information about the knowledge that you're getting on these pages. And I think this was, this gives some extra to the book and I was very intrigued by those and I have to confess that for some of them I actually spend a lot of time um, searching these things on the internet and be like hmm how did this person get to here so that was very that was very interesting and it just gave me a little something that made me want to go through uh, the book a bit more um, Another uh, thing I want to mention is about the author. Um, so the author is a professor of mathematics as, at Queen's uh, College and the Graduate Center of City University of New York. So I think that is very important for you to know. Also, I, I think um, he did a wonderful job at um, explaining in the preface how... Um, he organized the book. So for anyone going, uh, wanting to go through this book, I think that is really important for you to read uh, because it explains how he organized the chapters, the order in which you should be doing the um, stuff and how long approximately it should take. So he also mentions that this can be um, an actual uh, graduate level course and he mentioned that the whole book has material for one year long graduate uh, level course so you can imagine that me as an independent student um, obviously I can't go through this in a couple of months and it will take me a very long time to finish the whole book um, another thing that uh, he mentions and I could see it in the first um, kind of chapters was that he accentuates the geometric viewpoint uh, whenever possible and I think that's really important also um, I want to show you all of uh, the di di not diagrams the actual drawings are very distinct on the page you could see just the one with the circle but I want to see if I can find another one so they're very distinct yellow they pop on the page and for some reason for me personally um, this was very easy to see because I'm more like a visual person so I like to make diagrams and I draw all of the things and the information given so I think this kind of information and so colorful on the page really helps me to remember things so I think that was very um, interesting um, another bit I think I will go through like a very short um, overview of the first chapter because it's the rudiments of complex analysis just for you to to get a general idea of how the book looks in um, general so it's as i was saying it has the very basic like definitions and like pop on the page um, it's also split in like little sub chapters and they explain they're very straightforward what they mean the theorems uh, in the ones that have actually uh, read so far uh, they're very uh, detailed and um, there's I, I didn't find a lot of stuff that were like you can think of it later or uh, the proof is left for the reader and stuff like that so um, I think that was very interesting it has um, a lot of examples I like examples they they make me understand the topic way better and the book has lots of examples and I think that was good so if you can see from the first um, chapter like if you have examples here and then it continues with the examples uh, until we get to another theorem so I think that's pretty important for a book to have that much information um, and again I did mention the historical little bits and pieces there over here um, so 
it has your your normal kind of textbook feel so you have the corollaries you have the definitions examples theorems you have remarks and they're all notated so you can very easily go back to any of them if they're mentioned in proofs and anything so i think that was very it's very well organized from that point of view i don't have any problems with going through um, the information so as you can see very organized and again um, you can see the whenever we mentioned any type of like a visual representation or like any type of diagrams or graphs or any type of drawings that will help with the understanding they're like popping on the page and i think that's very um important so another like bit of extra information here um, and this one is not actually historical, so it says a primitive is what students of calculus call anti-derivative, uh, and I thought, oh, that gives me that gives me some extra things and extra context, and like I actually used to call it like that, never called it a primitive. So, um, um, and then you also have like. Um, obviously photos of the mathematician that actually worked on a specific theorem and I think that is again it gives a bit something to uh, the theory it doesn't feel like a dry it just feels like someone actually worked on this and this is one of the people that worked on it and I think that's very important for us to understand that even though we do learn these things now a lot of people have been working on this and um it's years and years of work on this. It's not just something that like magically appeared over the night. And as you can see, just in the first chapter, it goes through quite a lot of uh, people. And I think that's important. If you go through one chapter and you see a, a three to four um, images, it already gives you the feel that like, oh, a lot of people have been working on this. Oh, I'm actually happy I got to another diagram. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of them and I and I like this um, representation. And then the chapter finishes with problems. So that's what I was mentioning. So this one has quite a lot of problems. As you can see, it goes up to 37. So you have a lot of things uh, to practice and um, that is quite interesting and then it goes to the second chapter um, another bit it's it's something a bit random for me um, and it has to do with the cover so I when I saw this book I was like very interesting the cover looks interesting and uh, very artistical and because I had absolutely no knowledge uh, or very, very little knowledge about the topic. I was like, is this related to the actual topic or not really? So for me, being like complete new to this, I was like, I'm very curious if we will get to this one. And if someone will actually explain this um, to me, which you do get that. So that, I was very excited to, to see the con all of this connection. So... You do, it's more like at the end of the book, which makes a sense. Oh, I've just passed another um, diagram. That I think it's again, you can see that how easy it is for you to see the information. So it is on somewhere in the back over here. I should have made a, a note of where it is. Perfect. So you actually get explanations about what the art on the on the cover means. If you are not new to the topic, you maybe could have figured it out straight away. For me, it was uh, everything was new. So I really appreciated that at one point in the book we get to actually understand what is on the cover. So I think that's important. If it's something random, it doesn't make sense for me. It's not that um, exciting. Um, so. And then another bit I actually want to read to you because I think it's very important and it did make um, it did make me feel a bit better about going through this very slowly. So it's exactly the first quote that it's on the book. So immediately after the title, you got this first quote. 
Um, so uh, it's from Quantum Magazine, January 1990, uh, by William Thurston. If I pronounce the name wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, when I was a child, I took pride in how many pages I read in an hour. In college, I learned how foolish that was. When reading mathematics, 10 pages in day can be an extremely fast pace. Even one page a day can be quite fast. On the other hand, if you already understand something, you may get more by skimming than by reading every word. You need to be alert and suspicious. You need to question and think about your, what you're reading in your own way. Don't be afraid to stop in mid-paragraph or mid-sentence when something surprises or puzzles you. Speed isn't the issue. Don't assume something is obvious just because an author treats it that way. What you work on what you work out on the side, even though it takes much more time, it will immensely, it will have immensely more value than what you read straight through. through. So for me, that is, that was something that I had to work on. Um, I didn't fully understand this at the start um, of my university and um, school in general so I was always feeling a bit down whenever I was like why did, did does it take me so long to go through this and I don't understand what's happening and things like that so now when I look at this sometimes even at the start in the first chapter I had to stop uh, in the middle of some of the things and be like I do not remember this information what does it actually mean how do I go through this and I was very confused by some of the things and um, slowly it's it's slow progress and I think that's very important for everyone to understand it's not going really fast and I haven't finished the book um, it will take me a while to finish the book um, and I'm happy with that I'm happy with that uh, sometimes um, I had time just to read one example and even that example for it it took me a while to understand or sometimes I go through a definition and a theorem after and I'm clueless and the next day I have to go back to that definition and that theor theorem again and so on so um it's slow progress but I am happy with the slow progress and I think the fact that the book starts with that at exactly the start and then you have a preface a preface that is very well organized it just gives you a bit of a boost on starting this and i think that's again that is really uh, great so yeah this is the book uh, it's continuous work it's gonna take me a while as an independent student and um yeah let me know if you have any um extra advice uh, about this or if you've read this or if you've read similar books just let me know in the comments down below and yeah i will be speaking with you soon and have a lovely day bye